Hi everyone, my name is Liu Ting from Institute of Computing Technology and the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences. Today, I'm so glad to present our research, modeling and optimizing the scanning performance in distributed deep learning training. This is a joint work with Kuaishou. Nowadays, training deep neural networks are time-consuming progress. Distributed deep learning is widely used to accelerate training on multiple nodes. The metric to depict scanning performance in distributed deep learning is the scanning factor, which is equal to the training type on one node divided by the number of nodes n multiplied the training type on n nodes. Here is an example. When training type on one GPU is 9 hours, and distributed training type on 8 GPUs is 1.25 hours, then the scanning factor equal to 9 divided by 8 multiply 1.25. The scanning factor is 0.9, which is always less than 1. The higher scanning factor means a better scanning performance. The previous research had improved since distributed deep learning always fails to scan out nearly, and the communication is a bottleneck hampering the training performance when the system scales. Here we discuss the training process. When training neutral networks on a single node, here are two parts. The green arrows are forward paths. Data samples are fed to model, and it computes the loss function from the first layers to the last layers. This is the forward path. Next, the blue arrows from the last layers to the first layer to compute the gradients and update parameters. This is the backward path. Here comes the distributed training case. It's data parallelism, which is a common way in distributed deep learning. Each node extrudes forward and backward paths locally, which is also called the computation phase. Next, nodes exchange the gradients they compute locally and synchronously update the parameters by static gradient descent. It means SGD, which is also called communication phase. This is the overview of our research. The first is modeling the scanning performance in the DL system with the training task, DNN models, and the setting of distributed platform. We built the OSF model to capture the two important features in DDL training, computation and communication overlap, and the tensor fusion strategy. The output is the estimate scanning factor to depict the scanning performance. The second, after we attain the S scanning factor, the next is diagnosing potential communication bottleneck. For the low scanning factor, we break down the communication time, then analyze the communication bottleneck. Finally, based on the different bottlenecks, optimizing the scanning performance in two directions. One is to reduce the amount of communication. The method is layer replacement and another is to decrease the communication time. We proposed adaptive tensor fusion strategy. Here we depict the timeline in distributed deep learning. The first part is forward path. The green box represents the forward time in each layer, from layer I to layer N. Next is the backward time from layer N to layer 1. And the final one is the communication time. Then we roughly compute the training time by sum up the forward, backward, and communication time. This is the main idea that many researchers often use the communication to computation ratio, simplified to C to C ratio, to estimate scanning factors. The computation time can be estimated by two main factors. The floating point operation required in forward and the backward computation, and the actually compute capacity of computing nodes like GPU in our experiment. The communication time is calculated by the totally transferred data size and the average bandwidth, which are related to communication architecture and network infrastructure. 
We can attain these parameters by the seeing of the distributed platform, but there are some problems. Recently, many distributed frameworks adapt overlapping in training. The communication operations no longer launch after the backward computation of all layers are finished, but transfer the gradients of one layer immediately when it, its gradient is ready. Thus, some communication time can be hidden by the backward computation time. The training time should pass the communication time without overlap. And C2C ratio is not accurate anymore for ignoring the computation to communication overlap in training. Here, we define a scan factor considering overlap model simplified to OSF model. The important one to estimating the overlapped communication time, we use our recursive model. Always get the max time between the end time of the backward computation and the end time of the previous layer communication and the start time of new layer launch communication. In this way, partial communication can be overlapped by the computation. Moreover, during the DDL training, the communication schedule would also bench multiple small communication operations into one to reduce communication overhead. This is called the tensor fusion strategy. There is a constant tensor fusion buffer size set by user before training. Then the gradient of layer N would be put in the buffer when its size is less than buffer size. Next, the layer N minus 1 is also the same. If the buffer is full, the fields layer n and n minus 1 can be transferred together. However, the strategy also introduces the wait time, which is waiting for the finish of the backward computation. In short, the schedule fuels the tensors when the sum of size is less than the buffer size, and transfers the used tensor in buffer when the buffer is full or timeout. This is a trick to avoid long wait time. We also extend our OSF model to tensor fusion. This is our training environment and models. We choose five representative models and the benchmark. The ResNet models has small size of parameters but multiple layers, and the VGG model has a larger size of parameters but few layers covering the common features of DN models. Our cluster, including four machines, are connected with 25 GPS networks, and each machine is equipped with 8 NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2018 type GPU. Our OSF model is not confined to our experiment cluster, but also can be extended to multiple computing nodes and larger-scale distributed clusters. This is the accuracy of OSF model. When training different models without the tensor fusion, the range of the estimation error in our OSF model is 0.5% to 8.4%, much lower than CSF estimated by the C2C ratio. This is because the CSF ignores the overlapping between computation and communication. One interesting observation is for ResNet model, CSF outperforms FSF. It means the transferring all the gradients at one time is greater than the transferring simple layers that are even partial hidden by computation. For the models has multiple tiny layers like ResNet. When estimating scanning performance with tensor fusion, OSF model also can get lower errors than CSF, and the buffer size can affect the scanning factor of models. Obviously, it is not bigger and better. In order to diagnose the communication bottleneck of the poor scanning performance, we collect the communication trace on Harvard, a distributed deep learning framework widely used by AI users. We break down the communication time into four categories. The first is the negotiation time, which is negotiation the sending tensor ordering among all GPUs in the cluster. The second is the waiting time. Mentioned in tensor fusion since the compute tensor in the buffer 
are waiting to or reduce operations. Or reduce time is the actually communication time among all GPUs in the cluster. The last is the mixed time, which means the other times not involved, like memory compute time. Here are the diagnosing results. The or reduce time occupies most of the computation time. In ResNet 101 is 88% and 94 in VGG60 for a larger size of parameters. A large amount of communication leads to long or reduce time. For the tensor fusion strategy, we end the buffer size from 0 to 1 GB, and the large buffer size reduces the or reduce time, especially for the ResNet 101 decreased by almost 40% and it also increases the wait time. The operate schedule strategy like tensor fusion can efficiently reduce the communication time to improve scanning performance. Therefore, based on our previous modeling and diagnosing, we optimize in two directions. One is to reduce the amount of communication. After analysis of the neural network structure, we find some layer structure like the fully connected layers heavily hamper the scanning performance. In our measurement, the fully connected layers occupy almost 89% of all reduced time in VGG16. Motivated by the network in network, we replaced the fully connected layers with conclusion layers in a global orange pooling layer. The scanning factor is great improved from 0.25 to 0.72. The second optimization is to decrease the communication time, and the previous diagnosing result finds that unsuitable buffer size of tensor fusion leads to poor scanning performance. So we propose the adaptive tensor fusion, simplified to end of fusion, and first several branch iterations parameter size, computation, and communication time for each tensor or layers are provided and recorded. Then, end of fusion scheduler calculates these times. If the time of transferring fused tensor plus the wait time is less than the transferring tensors respectively, then fuse the tensors. If larger, then not fuse. This is the optional adaptive fusion strategy. In this strategy, the key point is to estimate the communication type and QRTY. Different from MGWVP, we adopt a piecewise function to fit in the relationship between communication time and tensor size. For large tensor size, which is relatively stable bandwidth, taking nearly fitting function is the same as MGWVP, but for the small tensor size, taking the logarithmic function to mimic the increased window during a snow start. We compare the estimation error of the nearly and the piecewise function, and our piecewise function has a load estimation error in real constant tensor fusion transmission. When training on different models, our end of fusion strategy can improve the max 115% the constant buffer and 16% the MGWFBP. To conclude, we firstly proposed OSM model as modeling the scanning performance of DDL training involved communication overlapping and tensor fusion. The estimation error is over 83.8% louder than that of C2C ratio based on estimation. Then, diagnosing and analyzing the communication bottlenecks by breaking down the communication time. And last, optimizing the scanning performance. Layer replacement improves the scanning factor from 0.25 to 0.72 and end of fusion, an adaptive tensor fusion strategy. Outperformance exceeding constant tensor fusion and MGWBP by 115% and 16% respectively. Thank you for your listening. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh,
Is there any uh, questions from the audience about this nice talk? Uh, so uh, I'm saying Tang Liu is, is here, I guess. So uh, I might have a question maybe. Um, do you have any other experiments? So uh, 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 with, with other kind of data sets rather than just uh, image or computer vision like data set, uh, what about text or uh, something like that? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, we, in our experiments, choose uh, five same models for image class classification. Right. It's, it's widely used in performance measurement of the models. And uh, nevertheless, we tend to consider a more complicated model like birds mm -hmm. in our future work. And, and we uh, didn't end to the papers. All right. Okay. I see. 